if I was told this from early on, I would have saved a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, a lot of tears. So that is the one thing I wish I was told. What do I wish I was told before I start seeing Create the Bar? I, I spent a while thinking about this actually and the thing that um, I kept coming back to was that I wish someone had told me that it takes a while after the BPTC to get pupillage for a lot of people and that's okay. I think most of us who pursue a career at the bar perhaps haven't got all that used to rejection. Um, you, we may have always been academically top, at the top of our game and excelling in other areas too. So I think I would have liked to know that fact a little bit sooner to maybe prepare myself for the time after the BPTC and um, to know that it's, it's okay that it, it might take a while and just so that I could have been a little bit more ready for that and a little bit more alive to the fact that it might be a bit of a bit of a uphill slog. I think the thing that I wish that somebody would have told me is that there are more people at the bar from non-traditional backgrounds than you might first think. I'm not in any way suggesting that there's full diversity yet. However, I think that before I went to the bar, I was very put off about the sort of people that usually go to the bar, that I might not fit in very well. But I think that so far in my career, although I'm not a barrister yet, I've met quite a lot of people from different backgrounds and I think that that's quite a nice thing that I wish that I would have been told before I decided to go to the bar because it would have made me feel more comfortable and also make me feel a bit more at home during the BPTC or even during any other sessions what I've um, engaged with previously. I, hope I wish that someone had told me that um, there is no re need to rush really. I started the um, bar course uh, when I was uh, just 23 and I thought I was going to need to rush into getting pupillage and to getting things on the way but actually I, when I turned up to my first class I realised I was one of the youngest people there. The bar is a really long journey and can be a really long career so there's loads of time to uh, you know, do a masters or take a few years out if you need to um, and a lot of people come to the bar as a second career. So I would say that given how difficult it is, make sure you're definitely sure that this is what you want to do and maybe not rush into it. So I wish I was told very firmly that the part-time course is by no means a shortcut in comparison to the full-time course. So I will hold my hands up and admit that when I enrolled onto the part-time bar course, I thought, yeah, the classes are every third weekend. I have got more than enough time to do the prep, to do all the reading, to do revision, to do pupils applications and to do extracurricular activities. I thought, yeah, that's more than enough time. I'll be perfectly fine. What I forgot to factor in was the fact that I had a demanding nine to five job and the fact that when I finished work at five o'clock, I was exhausted and all I wanted to, wanted to do was relax. What you have to teach yourself very early on, if you're working full time alongside this course, is that you have to be able to finish your day job but stay focused because you then have to either take yourself to the library, do a few hours of work, or take yourself home, get your books out, and make sure you're able to concentrate. Learn from my mistakes. I didn't realise that until probably halfway through the first year of the course, so I then had to play catch up to make sure I was in the position that I should have been had I adopted that approach right from the beginning. What I wish someone had told me before pursuing career at the bar is that this isn't a race to the finish line. So we thought this was such an important question. Not only did we ask the individuals that you've seen in this video, but we also took it to all our social media and the response has been absolutely crazy. One of our posts had over 4,000 views, which shows how important this question is and how with a few simple tricks or a bit of knowledge can make the journey a lot easier. So I'm just gonna go through a few of the responses that we got. We got so many that this is a laptop job, so if you see me looking down, that's why. Just before I go into them, disclaimer that none of these are my own personal experiences, but they're other people's that they've kindly given to us to be able to share with you guys and help you from their own perspective.
This can be an emotional roller coaster, so make sure that you're prepared for the emotional roller coaster and make sure that this is actually a career that you want. Don't just come into the career for the money because there's so many ups and downs that you'll experience throughout this that you can't do this just for the money. You have to want this career because it can be such an emo emotional roller coaster. Someone says that there's parts that they've absolutely enjoyed, there's parts that they've hated and there's parts where they felt that they've been completely out of their depths and they've even wondered if this is for them. Another response we got is that there is no other course like this. There is nothing to prepare you for the roller coaster and the ride that you're about to take yourself on. So be prepared for this you may have done lots of work experience before you may have got a good grade on your degree but there is nothing that compares you for this course a personal thing that i would add to that is that make sure you actually have some friends that are going through the same thing as you the amount of times i've had to tell my mom what is pupillage and not a lot of people are going to understand the journey and the heartache and the hard work that you're going to have to put into this course so make sure you have a few friends that actually are going through it themselves and understand it another response we got is that this is such a diverse and inclusive bunch of people at the bar that don't feel like you're not going to fit in one thing that makes people stand out is that when they show their personality when they're able to show genuinely who they are is something that can go a long way in, at the bar another is that the connections and the friends that you make in this industry are so important this can be in loads of different ways so as i mentioned personally having a, a friend that knows what you're going through can always be an amazing thing but also in terms of networking, you may be able to find um, mini pupillages this way. You may be able to get um, experience or find out about webinars through the connections that you make. So get yourself on LinkedIn, make sure you've got a LinkedIn page, make sure you know what's going on. And it also will help you keep up to date with any legal issues that's going on. Another is to use time as an advantage. So you may get rejected from pupillage and have to wait a year to apply again. So take this opportunity to improve and develop, learn new skills, always just work on you as a person. Learn from rejection. Rejection, 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 rejection. Rejection can be a big part of your journey to the bar, but that doesn't mean that you're not good enough to get to the bar. A lot of people may not have experienced rejection before because they would have got amazing um, A-levels, they would have got amazing grades at university, they may have applied for loads of jobs and got them straight away on the first interview. They may have always just had success, but your journey to the bar can come with a lot of stumbling blocks, but that doesn't mean that you're not good enough. If you definitely want this and you're willing to put in the hard work, your time will come. The next comment we got, I really, really like. It says, congratulate others on their success. They may be your colleague one day. And I think that's just amazing. It's not always about your journey. Um, you may, like I said, you may have step back, so you may have rejection, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't celebrate others. This is a community and you may be against them eventually in court. Your journey just may be a bit longer than theirs. So I think it's always important to congratulate others because this is a hard journey. So the fact that someone has actually made it means that they've put in that work and they deserve it. Another comment that we got was know that there's other ways to get to the bar you don't have to do the bar course and then pupillage there's other ways to get to becoming a barrister hopefully we'll be able to explore this more in another video so make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned and we just got loads more comments so i'm just going to go through it a few more but i won't bore you too much i hope that the ones that we've shared with you so far has given you some help and will help you on your journey going on from that 
another person that says that you don't need to get first. There's some barristers that didn't get a first at university, but they were able to show their commitment through their experience or other means. This one's a big one. And I know a lot of people struggle with this one, that raising a family or going through hard times is not looked down upon. It's actually hugely respected sometimes because it shows that you're resilient. It shows that you've been through something, you've been able to push through whatever it is and you've continued to keep it moving and push for your goal. And this can be hugely respected. Also, having a family, it shows that you're able to balance multiple priorities and also that you're able to stay motivated because if you're able to look after seven running around kids and still get your uni work done, then hats off to you. Always think about ways that you can turn your negatives into positives. Don't put yourself down at, I can't achieve this because of X, Y, and Z. Find a way to take your negatives and turn them into positives. And show this on your application forms. The last two that I will leave you with is, when you feel like there's no opportunities, find a way to make them. Whether that's networking with people to get work experience or whatever way it may be. But don't ever feel like there is not an opportunity. Make an opportunity. And the last one is concentrate on always being the best version of you. Don't listen to statistics. Don't listen to that people from certain backgrounds can't get to this career. Always focus on being the best version of you and always put in the best version of you forward. Last thing I want to say is thank you to everyone that has commented, whether that's on Take a Seat at the Bars post or whether it's been one of our personal posts. Thank you for all the comments that have come in for this video. There's been so many and I've tried to um, pick as many as I can to share with you guys. I hope that it helps someone on their journey, whether you're feeling like this is not for you and this is just a bit of an encouragement to keep at it, keep working hard, keep making sure that you put your best in your applications. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, make sure so that you're subscribed. We try to answer as many questions as you guys put in. If you haven't already seen the links below, please send your questions in that we will be asking our students and practitioners to answer. If you are not following us on our social media, you should go and do that now at Take A Seat At The Bar. We're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn and stay tuned for another video.